Hi guys, welcome back to the shop. Hey, today we're going to get on the honing for the uh, 250 MX Yamaha. We're going to hone it, uh, deburr, chamfer the ports, and uh, you know fit the piston. So let's get on down here and get started. All right, over at the Sun and Hone. And uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to true up my stones. And I'm just going to break the edges on my stones. And then we'll get set up here with our cylinder
keep checking here to make sure that we're uh, not introducing any taper into it. Everything's good. Now we'll keep up with our truing. I'm going to change my stones over to a finer grit. These were 280 and now I'm going to go to 400. See if that's, yep, that'll be good. We'll go ahead and dress these two. Okay, we should be getting real close. Yeah, the piston just almost goes in there now. We're probably within a thousandths.
We were right at zero. And maybe one ten thousandths above it. So the piston will go in there now. So we're starting on our clearance now. about a half thousandths. Same on the bottom end. So we've got oh about a thousand yet to go. Which won't take very long. Eight ten thousandths. Same. Okay, got her all honed out. Now we're gonna. I'll get you overhead, and we'll go through the uh, uh, the chamfering process again, and uh, just give you. A, a look and see how it looks and uh, show you what we ended up with all right let's take a look at it here take a measurement here real quick all right let's take a look at it here I'm gonna try to get it like this so we can keep the glare out okay getting right at 16 And right at 16. Okay, let me point out where we're measuring at. Uh, Yamaha tells me uh, 3 eighths of an inch or about 10 millimeter uh, at, from the bottom of the skirt. So it's really just about right here, right between and under the holes. 
and so it'll be just like this on the piston and of course this is a fresh bore so it's not a big issue but if you're uh, if you're checking it when it's when it hadn't just been bored they want you to check six places so you uh, you do it here exhaust intake and then you do it like this down a little lower and then underneath exhaust to intake this way and you average those out but in this case I'm just I'm taking my measurement from uh, about a three quarters of an inch down and but it should be very similar in every place I, I measure in there the way we are right now and here's our uh, here's our fit And we did go to one. You're going to have more, more at the top because your piston is going to swell. Your, your piston is, uh, it's not straight up and down. It's probably about 10 thousandths or something like that. Let me see. I know I've measured these before or other pistons and that's about what they turn out to be. So if you measure it right here at the top, just below the ring land, this is inches, 2.781. And then if you measure it down here at about where they tell you to measure it, 2.794. So there is quite a bit of difference there. So uh, just pay attention to where you measure and uh, we're all, we all should be good to go here. Let me just go ahead and, and check my ring cap real quick. And if you're putting new rings, new rings in an old cylinder or one that hadn't been bored, you would want to put them and put this at the least worn area, which is typically the bottom in here and that's where you would measure it right down in here but since we're uh, this is a fresh bore we got a nice snug 19 thousandths or 0.48 millimeter so I believe that's just about right on and uh, at this point, this is our uh, MX piston and ring. Yeah. So we should be good to go. All right, uh, let's uh, kind of clean up the bench here a little bit and we'll do some chamfering. Okay, I've kind of evolved here on my uh, tooling. I've, I've tried some of the diamond cutters and I mean, these aren't expensive like you would think diamonds are uh, you can get a whole package of them for probably 1995 or maybe even less and they wear pretty good and they're a lot you know I've, I've used uh, I've used stones and I've used burrs but in reality for deburring I think the diamond is the best way to go it gives you um, it, it doesn't hook so bad and you can just uh, you can just go right along the edge and get them and you don't have as much trouble with them wanting to skip away from you. Now one thing I want to point out and I've done this before on my other uh, videos on this is that when you're when you're uh, chamfering these you only need to chamfer the top 
and the bottom. So you're going to go in down here and get the bottom and then up here. The sides you don't need to get because the ring is sliding up. So the only place it's going to hook is along those surfaces. So there's just no need in trying to mess with that. Uh, you Usually you would end up uh, you know, widening them a little bit and you may or may not want to do that depending on whether you're uh, just chamfering or you want to pour it. Uh, let's see here what I can do to maybe so you can see. Okay, I'd, like I say, I just go in here. I'm not going to show this whole thing, but Yeah, see that's all it takes. If you if you're feeling that with your bare fingers and it's sharp, you need to do something. But if it if it doesn't feel sharp to you, you're in good shape. You don't need to do anything else. Now a lot of people uh, just use a flex hone, and I've I've done that before too. That actually digs down into the ports a little bit and it will deburr them too. But this just takes, uh, just, you know, I can do this whole procedure in less than five minutes probably. It's not a big deal. Now that one there I'm going to get from the bottom, uh, well actually the, the top, but I'm going to, I've got a 90 degree angle one here too, so it makes it a little easier for me to to reach down there and get those. But that's uh, the other thing you want to do is you want to just uh, I've already done this, so I'm not going to do it again. But go around the top here and just uh, clean that up, and then once you've done it. Uh, I like to go in with some 400 grit sandpaper and just smooth that up. And again, if you can feel that, sharp, if it's sharp, it is, and you need to take care of it. And then we go to the bottom, and uh, you want to you want to work the bottom of your ports, and you also want to get in here and. Do these areas right here. Okay. Do them on both sides. And uh, like I say, I've already done this, so I'm not going to do a lot of it. You take a chance of getting in there and messing something up. But everything, you know, it's not a big deal. If you're, if you're spending more than five minutes doing that, uh, you're doing too much. So you want to be very careful. All you want to do is take the edge off of that. All right. Okay. Now, another thing you want to do is uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw this in the ultrasonic cleaner and clean the whole thing up, but uh, because it'll like take a lot of the paint off and everything. Plus it takes that, uh, it takes a lot of the grit and stuff that's in there out. And another thing that it, even after I do that, I will use automatic transmission fluid. And it doesn't matter what type, it's just that, you know, it can be Dextron or Mercon or whatever. I just happen to have some Type F here. Uh, the thing, the point is, is automatic transmission uh, fluid is very very high detergent and you would want to wipe that let me just kind of show you now you use it sparingly but it's normally red like that see how the black comes off that's what you're cleaning out of there that's all the grit and stuff from the honing and the chamfering. 
See? So you want to continue doing that until that white paper towel comes out with no color on it except red, like this. So let's go over what we've already done here. See, it's still coming out with some dark, dark areas on it. So you just keep doing it and wiping it out until you come out with, with red only and no black. Red and white, that's all you want to see. And then you know you're clean, you've got it all out of there. So make sure you clean them good because if you don't, as soon as you start that thing up, you're just, you're running all that grit up and down in there and you're wearing your cylinder out just on startup. So be very cautious, be very clean. Okay, just a, another look. I'm real happy with how it turned out, and uh, at least we've got most everything ready for the top end. Uh, we just need to, I'm still waiting on bearings, so as soon as we get bearings in, then I can start uh, working on the transmission again and the, and the lower cases. But as of this, uh, uh, as of today, we've got the, the top end ready to go. I've probably got... Uh, some uh, cleaning up on the head and uh, the nuts and and uh, and the barrel, of course. But we'll uh, we'll take care of all that and get it painted up, so it'll be ready when we are ready for it. Okay, guys, there you have it. We've got the the top end all ready to go, and all we're doing now is waiting on some more parts, and we'll get on the lower end. Then we can get that buttoned up. So that'll probably be at least two more videos on this engine and possibly three. We'll just, we'll see where it goes. But anyhow, thanks for going along on the ride and we'll see you next video.